With 2019 fast approaching, we thought it was time to look into the bike radar crystal ball of truth and power to see what road cycling trends next year has in store. So sit back and feast your eyes upon the hottest trends in road cycling right now. In the bad old days, aero bikes were a pain in the arse, in both the literal and figurative senses. Fussy integrated cockpits, labyrinthine internal cable routing and punishing amounts of stiffness meant that your free speed came at a steep cost in terms of maintenance time and comfort. In 2019, that's starting to change. Take Trek's latest Madone SLR disc for example. It's got all the wind tunnel tested chops you expect from an out and out speed machine, yet also retains a comfy and compliant ride thanks to the adjustable ISO speed decoupler around the seat stay bridge. You can even adjust the flex in the ISO speed decoupler by moving a slider which sits under the top tube. All that's needed is a 2.5 and 4mm Allen key and 3 minutes of your time. Specialised's new Venge is another example of an aero bike that's easier to live with. The older Venge Vias was a plethora of proprietary integrated parts which rendered the bike, let's say, mechanically challenging to put it politely. The new Venge features a two-piece bar and stem combo that sacrifices the Vias sci-fi aesthetic in favour of ease of access, adjustability and handlebar options. Perhaps 2019 is the year aero bikes finally come of age? Our 2018 Bike of the Year, the giant TCR Advance 2, comes with tubeless tyres straight out of the box, and we think that's a good thing. A tubeless setup brings the prospect of fewer punctures and lower rolling resistance, yet they have still struggled to gain the same almost universal acceptance as in the mountain bike world. This is probably due to the fact that tubeless is harder to set up when compared to a traditional tyre and tube combo, especially when higher pressures are involved. Also, direct sale brands such as Canyon are reluctant to ship their bikes with a load of sealant sloshing around in the tyres. If a tyre happened to pop off the bead during shipping, it would be incredibly messy. So, whilst it may not happen in 2019, just like disc brakes, we think road tubeless will eventually become more mainstream within the road market. Speaking of the Venge, 2019 is also the year we're starting to see power meters come as standard on high-end road bikes. If you're paying top dollar for a bike, and the Venge is most definitely top dollar, then you should expect the best of everything, and that includes the ability to measure power. So it's a gold starter specialised who have specced their new Venge model with their own power meter, which has internals made by dedicated power meter brand 4Eyes. Cannondale, well, they get half a gold star. Their new System 6 aero bike does come with a Power 2 Max power meter, but you need to pay an extra fee to activate it. Almost there, Cannondale, but not quite. Specialized changed the saddle game when they released their power model in 2015. It was incredibly short for a road saddle, the reason being that the snub nose would relieve pressure on the soft tissue when riding in an aggressive aero position. It's proved comfortable for almost everyone who's tried it. Pro riders loved it, we loved it, and it seems everyone else, men and women, love it as well. Fast forward to today and many brands have released their own take on a short nosed saddle. One of the most recent being Sella Italia with its snappily named Novus Boost Kit Carbino Superflow saddle. This received an almost perfect score in a recent bike radar review and was dubbed the perfect place to start if you're looking at dipping your toes into the world of short nosed saddles. Pro also have a popular stubby saddle called the Stealth Carbon, which again scored highly in a bike radar review. years gone by, if a bike brand product manager needed to shave some cost off a new model, they'd simply look in a catalogue of Far Eastern origin, pick the most cost effective components and have their name printed on it. It might have been cheap, but the products often lacked the quality and prestige of aftermarket componentry. 
Thankfully, these practices are becoming rarer and rarer as bike companies are spending time and money on developing their in-house componentry in order to keep up with the competition. Take Trek's in-house brand Bontrager for example. Their Aeolus wheel scored incredibly highly in a bike radar review and should be viewed as a tempting aftermarket proposition even if you don't ride a Trek. Giant is another company who have gone big on the in-house componentry to the point where their pro team's bikes are almost specced totally in giant components. Same goes for Quickstep Floors who race almost exclusively on specialised and roval components. So if it's good enough for the pros then we suspect it'll be good enough for you too.